Yes, yes, yes. Come on. Well, we have came for calf, but Steve has decided to go catfishing tonight. Oh, Lord, happy birthday! <laughs> 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 what a creature. Please don't hurt me. Welcome back to another vlog. Now, today, you join me, as you probably guessed it, at Linear Fisheries. Now, I haven't been down here for a couple of months. I was actually down here a few weeks ago doing the BCAC, but I'll be talking about that in another video. But today, we're down on St. John's. Now, we're around mid-April now, and the box common hasn't been caught yet. So you never know, we might catch that. And yeah, I'm actually fishing a pretty decent peg. I'm set up on the left-hand point. If you know St. John's, there's sort of a point down the ball end. And yeah, me and a couple of mates were set up here. I'm on the left-hand side, and I've got a good few nights ahead to try and catch as many fish as possible. Now, the conditions, they're not ideal. As you probably know, this spring has been horrendous for carp fishing so far. Middle of April, and it's probably about five degrees, but we're gonna give it a good go, no excuses. But for now, let's get the rods out and try and see if we can get a quick bite or two. Here we go. First little disaster of the trip, it happens to everyone. I um, decided to leave my back buzz bars at the venue which I was last fishing. So now I'm having to use two five litre buckets as a backrest. To be fair, it looks pretty carpy, but yeah, there's fish in the swim as well. Anyway, enough of me talking again. Fish are boshing, let's go catch them. Well, we're going into our first night down here on St. John's and I'm feeling pretty confident. I've only been down for around two hours. I've already had a bank, did lose it, which is a bit unfortunate. Not really sure what happened. It is looking promising, because like I say, that bite is the only bite that's happened today on the lake while I've been here. There's been a couple of fish caught in the channel. Um, but yeah, the fish that are showing up, I'll spin the camera around. They are showing like dolphins, but the proper Ziggy shows, you'll probably see one any minute now. They just seem to be holding up in the water at the moment. There's maybe a hatch or something, not entirely sure, but for whatever reason, they are loving it. Typically, as soon as I've pointed the camera out towards the lake, they've stopped boshing, which is a bit annoying, but yeah, it's looking pretty good. Three zigs out there. Come on, fish, jump. You're making me look like a right idiot now. Oh, there is one. Three. You see that? I wasn't lying. And to be fair, that's not a million miles away from the right hander. Come on, the carp. Oh, here we go. A bottle of coke for breakfast. And my alarm going off. Wee. Like my screensaver. It's me and Steve. Who's that? But um, yeah, as you can see there, a rod is missing. A bottle of coke is pretty much empty, which means I've been up all night drinking bottles of coke and catching carp. I was able to get three bites last night. Did lose one unfortunately again, but onto the positive news. I caught one around 11 o'clock last night. Not gonna lie, I just got into bed. It was pretty cold and I just wanted to get back to bed. So I quickly got the fish out and it was a lovely 26 pound mirror. And to be honest, I was over the moon with that. However, there are quite a few carp in here which go over the 30 pound barrier. And I was hoping the next one might be 30 pounds. And yeah, about 10 minutes ago, the fish have moved back in the area this morning. Yeah, about 10 minutes ago, the rods went. And we've got a big one. And when I say a big one, I mean, we've got a big one. Yeah, I'm absolutely over the moon. So what I'm going to do is just wait for the sun to come up a little bit more, give it 10, 15 minutes and get the fish out on the mat to do photos. The weather today, it's not going to be ideal, but I feel like with these zigs, we're going to be able to keep the bites coming. And you never know, you never know if that could have been the box, who knows. But you never know, we might catch the box today. I'd like to dream anyway, you know what I mean? When you go fishing, you want to dream of catching them big ones, but it never happens. Yeah. Well, people always say that zigs don't catch big carp, but this was caught on a zig, and it is a pretty big carp. 37 pound. I thought it was going to go 40 pounds, but honestly, I do not care. I also caught a 26 pound mirror last night. Did lose another one, but what a start to the session. Anyway, I'm going to put it down in a sec because my back is pretty sore. And as you've probably seen from previous videos, I struggle lifting 10 pounders. 
That sound. It's a lift and miss. It's a little bit of a challenge. But yeah, what a creature. Please don't hurt me. But what a creature. And let's hope we can catch a few more. And you never know, there's a common out there, probably about eight to nine pounds bigger than this one. You never know, it might have our name on it. But let's not get too greedy. <sighs> what a fish. What I'm going to be doing on this vlog is breaking it up into two different sections. So there's going to be the session down at St John's, which you've just seen the first part too. And then the second part is going to be today where hopefully I'm going to catch a couple on three line bread. A lot of people think the only thing I ever do is go to linear, put three rods on a spot. And yes, I absolutely love that style of fishing, but surface fishing and three lining has got to be my number one favourite method. You don't want to be doing it in the cold months because you're not going to find the carp on the surface. And I find come July, August time, once they're being pressured on the surface a bit, it can become quite a little bit... Oh, God, a sneeze. <laughs> hair fever. Come June, July, and especially August, once them carp have been pressured off the top, again, it can come quite difficult to catch them. So hopefully today, I'm going down to a farm pond. There's only a handful of carp in there. But like I said, it's saying 19 degrees on the van. This is the first proper warm spell that we've had of the year. And I'm confident we're going to find a couple. Anyway, I'm about five minutes away from the lake now. So let's carry on the journey and see if we can catch a couple of carp free lining. Well, I've got to the lake and this is the setup which I'm going to be using. All it is, is a nine foot, three pound test curve dwarf rod. On there, I've got a dwarf reel loaded up with 15 pound zig floor line. And all I've got here is a size eight floater claw hook. So yeah, that's going to be the rod. And it doesn't get much more simple than that. All I've got here, loaf of bread for bait. GoPro so I can record anything which happens, which hopefully will happen landing it down here and I've got my Anoka mat up here which I'll just leave at the van and then if I'm fortunate to get one I run round here quick and grab the mat it just sort of saves me carrying it around it's all about staying nice and light and finding where the fish are anyway enough of me talking let's go and try and catch one so I'm just walking down to the bottom corner there's a bit of a snag tree down here and this is normally where I find them on the top I've talked about traveling light but I've got this heavy camera with me. Here I'll lower my voice because this is normally where you see them. I can already see one down in that snag but it's way too snaggy. So I'll get down here. This is normally there you go. See that? This is normally where you see them but it's a few about I haven't got a clue if this GoPro is pointing in the right direction. Right, so all I've got here is quite a big soft bit of bread. All I'm going to do is take the hook. A lot of people hook bread in different ways. To be honest, I don't think there's a right or wrong answer. There's one literally right there. So all I do is get the big bit, put the hook straight through, squeeze it around the eye, and you're left with quite a big bit of bread. I don't want to fish one that big. So just <laughs> bite a bit off from that should be perfect right i'm gonna shut up now because there's a calf right down there and we might be able to get one first cast that was a shocking cast There's another one down there. I'm gonna try for this one first and then there's one out in open water which I'll try for. That was a shocking cast. You know what, I'm gonna try for this one in open water first. Just allows me to cast past it and sort of like drag the hook bait back in front of its face. That was a much better cast. Just bring it back, bring it back, bring it back. And stop that. <laughs> no. 
It's so finicky when we're taking bread. It's so finicky. Yeah, that one literally sucked it in and spat it out within about a millisecond. <sighs> Tell you, I love surface fishing and freelining. Tell you one thing, it can be equally, if not more so, frustrating than your boarding at times. Well, after putting that fish back this morning, I decided to have a little nap, catch up on a bit of sleep, go to the tackle shop, stock up on a few bits. I've decided to change the hook pattern to a size 8 float claw. And me being the organised person I am, I didn't bring any with me. So I went to the tackle shop, Paul's got them showing all over him. But the man of the hour, he lost it. Never mind. What are your thoughts on today? Um, my main thoughts? Poach your swim. Poach my swim. I think that's everyone's thoughts in my life, to be honest. <laughs> Welcome to Linear. That's the one, mate. I woke up this morning, and as you can see, it is bright sunshine. Now, I went to the shop, had a shower. However, Paul has just had a bite. Now, when he's playing it, I'm thinking, big fish do feed on the bottom in this weather. Big fish have got to feed. Whether it's high air pressure, low air pressure, sunny raining, they're going to feed on the bottom. Anyway, he's had a bite. He's playing it, and I heard him shout, it's the box. And to be honest, I sort of believed him, but I sort of didn't. I came around here and I seen a very, very, very big carp. The biggest carp I've seen on the complex in the margin. And I thought it was for a box. So I quickly ran back to the bivvy, grabbed the camera. And yeah, this is the footage that I was able to get. Don't lose it, don't lose it, don't lose it. Get the net ready, get the net ready. No, is it not the big ghosty? No, it's a big ghosty. Oh, no. <laughs> now, I don't have the top mic on, so I do apologize that the audio is horrendous. However, it wasn't the box, but it is a carp, which in my eyes is pretty much equal to the box. Now, here he is. <laughs> it's his birthday. I'm buzzing, mate. And it's just when and caught the big ghost. Thing. Absolutely buzzing. Can't believe it. Should we get it out? I was literally about <laughs> to spawn then as well. I'm so glad I didn't. Yeah. Buzzing, mate. Yeah. Uh, so I've just rang the bear lifts. We're gonna get it out, but it is massive. <sighs> Happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> well, we came here for the box, but we will take that. How about that, lad? <laughs> thought it was going to be a little bit bigger, and I think everyone watching this will agree it looks £50. It came out at £49 last year. Uh, it was £40.14 this morning, but we're irrelevant. It's a £40 on his birthday. I'm well happy. <laughs> Get on the squid. It deserves a bucket, do you think? Oh, yes. Oh Lord, happy birthday! Oh, <laughs> 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 yeah. Well, good morning. Now, this is actually the first time that I've done this intro. The first one, I wasn't really happy with. The second one, I was happy with. But I've just realised the microphone wasn't on. So here we go, round number three. Anyway, it's the morning. It's been a pretty good night. Now, as you would have seen by now, I've lost quite a few fish on zigs. Not gonna lie, starting to lose my head a little bit, but I made a couple of changes and it seems to have paid off. Now I got the first bite last night around 11 o'clock and I landed the fish probably around 15, 16 pounds. So I just decided to put it back. I don't want to wake people up, get it out on the mat. So just put it back. That was the first fish of the night. Got the rod back out and probably around 35, 40 minutes ago, just before I got light, the same rod was away again. And again, I've been able to land it. This time a little bit bigger, probably a mid 20. It's just down in the net there. But yeah, when I netted it, I decided to go wake Paul up just to let him know that I've got one. But I didn't have to wake him up because I've already got one in the net, baby. He's already got one. So literally, when I was playing mine, he had one probably two minutes after me. This guy on the social bank, he's just had one in the last sort of 20 minutes. But as you can see out there, 
there must be some sort of hatch going on this morning the wind's meant to be pushing down here which is good it's meant to do have a little bit of rain today but enough of a bbc weather forecast because it's probably lied let's get it out oh there we go speak of the devil spot switching on again now. yeah that guy in uh, pig three is playing one right now so there you go let's get them out before one of these other rods rip off and there we have it probably the nicest looking fish of the session so far and a little zig muncher this one must have been just swimming around out there this morning having a nice little snack and yeah a size 8 float a claw so put an end to that snack just over 25 pounds that's a 25 a 26 and a 37 for myself yes i've lost a few but catching fish like this when they look like this i really do not care anyway paul's got a big one down there so i'll go have a look at that the guy opposite just landed one there's another guy playing a fish so it looks like today the fish are going to be on the feed and we'll be able to catch a couple more but what a way to start the day get in and there we have it there's paul's fish what was it again 29 on the nose 29 on the nose now this might sound like i'm a sad f to years lot watching this video but when he got it out on the map this morning i actually recognized the fish straight away and it was actually one of the first carp that i actually caught from st john's probably around two three years ago um just them little skills by its tail sort of gave the game away how i recognized it i do not know but there we have it another one to add to the tally bosh got a lot of fighting in mate for a 29 beating you up oh my god i thought it was big <laughs> I've, se I've seen how you play fish slack clutch back winding playing them like a pussy <laughs> well the zig has finally went off it is flat calm it looks pretty ziggy and uh, i'm kind of hoping this is the box i was just looking at a photo of it and i thought it's got to be out there somewhere but you know what i don't think this is a bad fish so i'm gonna shut up now and try and land it Right, I've seen the fish, and as you can probably see, it's not a bad one at all. So I've just got to hope for size 8 throat of claw is pretty much nailed in the bottom lip. I'm sure it is, but still, it's not nice playing fish under the rod chip once you've seen it. There we go. Bit better. Let's have a look at it. It had my pants down. I reckon that's a 30 pounder. Bosh. Lovely. Oh, finally, after a couple of smaller ones, we've got a big one. 33 pounds. Yeah, I'm absolutely made up. We've got one more night here on St. John's. And if we're catching fish like this, I'm not gonna complain. Anyway, like I said, I reeled in the rods this afternoon, went to the shop, sort of resorted my life out, made sure them zigs were tied perfect, got the depth absolutely bang on, fresh hooks, got them out there. About 45 minutes, an hour later, the right hand has let out a couple of bleeps, and we've got this chunk of a mirror. Hopefully not the last, and you never know. One a little bit bigger, if we can be greedy, might be out there waiting for us. Get in. As you can tell, I am back in the van, which can only mean one thing. I caught nothing, however, we are back for revenge. If that was yesterday, I'm back here today, and I've brought the secret weapon with us. I've just dropped the secret weapon. The secret weapon is worms. I feel like they've been hammered and bred that much in the past that they just treat it with danger. So I'm hoping maybe these, a couple of these on a size 10 floor claw might be able to catch as one. My hair fever today has been an absolute nightmare. So I've just went to old Tesco when I got some kids medicine for pollen. Ah! hair fever. So yeah, other than that, nothing else has really changed the lake is still quiet which is a good thing i've literally just pulled up so i haven't even checked it but on the surface but to be fair i'm pretty confident for will be again <sighs> let's go get revenge because to be honest i've always known monsters in here i went to bed last night pretty devastated and gutted to say the least so yeah let's go try catch one on the old three lined worm I hope that was recording because that was freaking cool.
couple of nice fish to stock this branch. I've both got the worms with me today. It does feel very similar to yesterday in terms of it's going to be very tricky to get one. <laughs> I full on quit fishing full stop. I thought having the worms, it was going to be the little edge where I'd be able to catch one, but no matter how close I got the cast to the fish, I even had one where I balanced it on the fish's head and the thing still wouldn't take the hook bait. I think because it's 12 degrees, which is like the hottest it's ever been in Cumbria, the carp don't know what to do with themselves and they're more bothered about sunbathing rather than eating. Now, a few people might be thinking, why am I keeping these sections in the vlog where I'm blanking and I'm not really catching anything? But I wanted to show that although I do go fishing probably like 27 days a week, I just wanted to show that yes, it does happen and I do blank these couple of sessions being just that. However, another trip where I caught absolutely nada was when I went to St. John's just a few weeks ago. I went down with Reese and Steve. However, Steve was able to catch something pretty big and he was very happy catching it. Oh, and we're back in action. We Mr. are back. Co has joined the top hunter on the bank to blank. Well, the rods are ready to put out into the lake. And this right here, if the camera will focus, that is what I'm going to put out. Basically, just copying Tom Maker. But three D rigs. I've got two with a bit of red foam and red maggots. I've put a couple of white maggots on that one. And on the third rod, I've actually got a bit of cork and just a big bunch of white maggots. Obviously, you're not allowed to spot maggots down here, but you can use them in solid bags, mesh bags, or as the hook bait. So I'm going to get them out there. Wind's just dying off. Wind's picked up, to be fair, over the last couple of hours and started blowing more into this bank, which is perfect for these pegs. And yet, me and Steve, there he is, they're, um, we're pretty excited and confident one of us is going to catch the box. Well, we have came for carp, but Steve has decided to go catfishing tonight. Nah. Big this carp hook bait. This is going to catch some big carp. Nice His first two rods went out perfect. Let's see if this one goes out perfect. <laughs> Three chucks. Three perfect drops, three rods on the cap. 80 pound catfish. Well, Steve, what's happening? Start a cheeky little drop back on the middle rod. And play so it's slow. Could be a cat, could be a cat. I'm going to say, it sounded like a catfish bite from where I was. Oh, yeah, I think we know what that is. Meow, meow. One, two, three, four, five. One side caught. All fins rod. <laughs> 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 there we go. I don't hit it. I, did, I got it. I got it. <laughs> get your guesses in, people. Get your guesses in. Steve, you go first. Alright, let's have a little. I'm going to go 60. 60 pounder from 60, St. John's. 60 pound eight. There we go. After winning that massive, <laughs> what did you say, 60? No, 60 pound eight. 50, 47. A 47 pounder. I'm not, I'm not holding that. <laughs> that's the weight of the box. <laughs> Fucking hell, that's crazy. <laughs> Right, what are you going back with, mate? Oh. <laughs> well, Steve is um, off of the moon with his new personal best. Yeah, horrible thing. <laughs> right, 
but I was just on my way back home after a disaster blank up at the farm and I've decided to come to um, it was a club lake that I used to be a member of for probably nine years or something like that. I haven't joined the club for the last few years, uh, but you can get day tickets on here as well. So I just thought I'd come in and have a look. Basically all in these pads here, I've seen maybe like eight or nine. To be honest, I'm not sure how many fish are in here because um, otters are on the lake, but I've just seen what I'm 90% confident was the big common which hasn't been out in like ages. Like honestly, me and a few of us thought it was dead, but I'm pretty sure that's what I've just seen. So we're gonna spend five, 10 more minutes looking and then see if it's worth getting a day ticket from the post office. Cause I really, really want to catch one off the top. It's doing my absolute head in. We're doing it. We're doing it. I'm gonna buy a day ticket. I don't know why I'm running. There's no need for me to run. Um, but I'm gonna carry on running anyway because it adds dramaticness to the video. I'm gonna stop running. I'm too unfit for that. Um, yeah, there's a few fish there, and you know what? Might as well give it a go. <laughs> Might as well. I think a day ticket only costs like five quid or something. So, for the sake of catching a fish for the vlog and saving it, might as well do it. Uh, this is getting videoed on my phone, by the way, because the GoPro is in the van. And it's a bit of a walk to get down to the lake. So yeah, go post office, come back, and hopefully the fish is still there. We're doing it. Yeah, I've got all the gear now. Uh, got the same rod as what I was using at the farm pond. Where I'm planning on fishing is in amongst some lily pads. Um, but luckily I know that these pads aren't really too much of a snag hazard and um, they just tend to rip up off the bottom if you hook one and they go in there so that's not going to be an issue on the rail we've got 12 pound zig floor line and um, the only thing I am going to change is the hook so I was using a size 8 or a size 10 float claw up at the farm pond but down here I'm going to be using a size 4 twister the last carp I caught from here was like 2 years ago maybe even 3 years ago so yeah i'm not sure what the stock is it used to be around 90 but might still be 90 in here but to be fair i think a lot of them uh dead anyway i'm gonna put this camera down because holding this camera on this arm it actually weighs a ton so yeah come on i just gotta dig deep and i'm sure we can save this um little surface fishing mission in cumbria watch me catch a two pounder but honestly if i catch a two pounder i'll take it when i used to fish down on this lake the thing that always used to wind me up was this path here is for like public and there's another path down here for um, anglers and the public always used to go down this path onto the anglers bit and it used to piss me right off but today it's made me very happy and they are in these pads and I'm sure if I get a decent cast where my bread isn't sort of stuck on a lily pad I'll have a decent chance of catching one but it's just, is that going to happen? that's the big question that's what everyone's asking is it going to happen? is it not? who knows? it's not a bad cast it's not a bad cast, come on, turn, turn, turn. I'm sure it wasn't forecast to be this hot. These are like the days where you go out and just before you leave, your mum's like, make sure you put your sun cream on. And you go, yeah, all right. And you don't. And then you get home and you look like Mr. Crab or something like a lobster. <laughs> Get a fresh bit of bread on while there's nothing about. Or not, speak of the devil, there's one. Go have you. Nyaam. Excellent cast. Oh, no way. No, I don't know why I said no way there. Like, yes way. I struck out of it. What was I, what, what was I meant to do? Hook it? No, I'm not good at that. <sighs> God's 
sick, Jerry. There's no one called Jerry down here, by the way. I don't know why I've just said God's sake, Jerry. I have no faith, but I'm gonna catch a fish. <sighs> it's starting to get cloudy as well. Bat for one. Bat for one. Bat for one. Shirley, come on. Yes, yes, yes. Come on. Oh, I said them pads weren't going to be an issue. But they have been. Oh, come on, please. Oh, come on. I don't know how big it is. <laughs> come on. Where's my net? Little comment. <laughs> Come on. We have worked so hard for this fish, it's unbelievable. Come on. It's a six pound common. Come on. Come on. Come on. <laughs> oh, honestly, we have worked so hard. If this comes off, I'm gonna quit. Yeah, there we go. Out the pads. Come on. Come on. Yes. Oh, yes, 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 yes. That car might be about 12 pounds, but for the work that I've put in the last two days, trying to catch one, I honestly didn't care if it was going to be two pounds or 20 pounds. The thing is, whenever I fish up in Cumbria, I always say it, if I caught this down south, it would probably mean nothing, but when you catch carp up in Cumbria, when it is difficult, when the carp aren't the biggest, when you've worked as hard as I have the last couple of days, fair the moments that you go fishing for. I should do it a lot more. Obviously, with work now, I'm always fishing down south. Get in. Oh, let's get it out on the map. What a way to end the day. You often hear the phrase, cricket bat common used in fishing. And if this isn't a cricket bat common, I don't have a clue. Look at the state of that. It is proper long, but as the name suggests, it looks like a cricket bat. But I do not care. I've worked so hard the last couple of days to get a bite. And eventually, two venues later, a lot of walking, two loaves of bread, and a pot of worms, we're finally holding our prize. Yes, there's bigger ones out there, but whether it was two pounds or 22 pounds, I wasn't gonna care what picked up a hook of it. The sun has just went behind the clouds and it became really difficult to spot the car. However, this one, I just seen the pads move and I could sort of see its lips going on the pad. I cast the bread there, waited 30 seconds and eventually I seen the line tug, set the hook and to be honest, I was more in shock than um, expecting one to be on the end when I struck. But yeah, luckily the pads weren't too much of an issue with being able to land this one. It just goes to show, if you put the hard work in, the results are certainly better to be had. That right there, tastes like success, but it also tastes like a lemon loaf cake from Starbucks. Not only did I get the lemon loaf cake, I went and bought a double chocolate chip mocha frappuccino. Why? Because why the hell not? The last couple of days I've absolutely grafted and I need to finish this cake. Now, yes, the fish that I caught after them couple of days, it wasn't massive, but I do not care. I know I've said it a few times on this vlog already, but it's been ridiculously hot. The van's been saying it's 22 degrees. That's a lot, it's broken. It's been like 47 degrees, trust me. Um, yeah, two venues, two loaves of bread, a pot of worms, and uh, probably about 500 miles walked, but we eventually got there. And that brings us to the end of the vlog. Now, I know on this vlog, nothing really exciting happened. However, in the next couple of days, I'm going to be driving very far down south, 
to the Euro Tunnel and we're going back out to Belgium and France. Hopefully it's not going to end like last time because that'd be pretty bad. Because some idiot dropped his van keys on the canal and now he can't drive home because his passport, his camera gear, his laptop, his fishing gear, it's all locked in the van. But yeah, I really can't wait for that. I'm going to be going Belgium. As mentioned, I'm going to be doing a night on the Kempish Canal. Then I'm going to be going back to where I lost my van keys and then I'm going to be going to Abbey Lakes with my dad and with a mate of ours. And yeah, I really can't wait for that session. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe and I'll catch you on the bank sometime.